Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have do we have a uh, quorum? Yes, we do. All right. Well, then uh, let's uh, go ahead and call this meeting to order of the Sacramento Public Library Authority on October 28, 2021 at 3.02 p.m. If the clerk could please call the roll and establish a quorum. Angelique Ashby. Bobby Singh Allen. Here. Don Lee. Here. Eric Guetta. Here. Garrett Gatewood. Here. Kevin Spees. Present. Mai Vang. Patrick Kennedy. Phil Cerna. Desmond. Rick Jennings. I'm here. Sean, Sean Lalowy. Here. Sean Farmer. Sue Frost. Here. Tim Schaefer. Here. Saul Hernandez. Here. Karina Talamantes. And that's a forum. Great, thank you very much. Um, all right, uh, everyone could, oh, Madam Clerk, if you could please read the statement. Okay. This meeting of the Sacramento Public Library Authority is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government chairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated <coughs> Communications and AT&T U cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metro14live.satcounty.net. Today's meeting will be repeated Saturday, October 30th at 4 p.m. on Channel 14 and can also be viewed on Metro Cable 14's YouTube channel. The meeting will also be recorded via Zoom. A DVD copy will be available on request no later than two weeks following today's meeting. The full agenda, including reports, is available on the library website at www.saclibrary.org. Members of the audience wishing to address the board should raise their hand in the Zoom program. Please speak clearly when addressing the board and state your name for the record. Comments are limited to three minutes so that everyone may be heard. Please also note that participation in this teleconference via telephone rather than the Zoom app may result in your telephone number being visible to the public during the live broadcast and later telecast of this meeting. <clears throat> Great, thank you very much. Um, all right, if everyone could please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, States of America. and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, under God, indivisible, in with, liberty with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you, everybody. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, public comments on matters not on the agenda. Do we have anybody signed up to speak? No one signed up to speak, and I do not see any hands. Great. Oh, I, I see one hand up there. I have two hands up there, I see. Anita? Just yes, Anita. yes, Sandra has Sandra also raised her hand. Sandra um, Cleary. Yes, not. Their physical hand, not the electronic hand. Oh, but yes, okay, Sandra yes. raised her physical hand. Um, Sandra and I are actually together. So if Sandra is on audio, I will let her ask her question. Otherwise, if we have technology, I will I will jump in and ask. Okay, then let's go to Sandra here. Sandra, uh, go ahead. You have, you've got a couple minutes here to uh, address the board. Oh, you're on mute, Sandra. I think you're still on mute. Let's see. Um, Jared or Rivka, if someone can unmute Sandra, maybe that might help. Uh, unfortunately, we can only ask there her. Go. There we go. She's there. Go ahead, Sandra. You're good. Is that good? Yep, we can hear you. 
Okay, thank you. Um, what I was wondering is several of my friends and I have been using the community rooms for so many wonderful events, both at the Ardendemic and at the Carmichael Library. And I was wondering now that schools and just about everything is open, when the community rooms will be open again to the public? Okay. Let me ask, uh, uh, let's see, let me, I'll take your public comment. And then uh, Rivka, is this something we can answer at the moment here? Go ahead, Rivka. Uh, you're still on mute, Rivka. I couldn't find myself, I'm sorry. Um, I can hand it over to Kathy, but I will just briefly say that part of what we're still doing, even though we are now open for business in almost all libraries, is we still have to do social distancing. And our community rooms are being used for staff to do those backroom functions that used to have, we used to have six or eight people in a very small space working side by side. So the community rooms for the most part are still being used for that function. And I think Kathy may have a better uh, handle on when we think that might be mitigated, but until we, until we know that people can be closer in closer proximity, we're erring on the side of safety, but there may be some community rooms that are closer to being ready than others. I'm looking at Sue Frost is on my screen and maybe Orange Vale is, but Kathy? Uh, really, you, you covered it, Ripka and Sandra and Anita. We are, we are eager to open back up as much as we possibly can, but we do have to keep the safety of not just the patrons, but also staff forefront. Um, and most of our work areas are, are not, um, generous in sizing. And so we do have to take that six foot distancing very seriously, even while we are still masked. So unfortunately, in, in many of our locations, we're having to use the community room to, to do the basic, as Rivka said, backroom function. But as once we do open up community rooms, that will probably be a, a banner flying through the sky, we will all be relieved because that will mean a lot of things have happened just opening up those community rooms. But thank you for bringing that question to this meeting. Um, thank you for having such wonderful offerings in the community rooms. We really miss them. Well, thank you very much, Kathy and Rufka and Sandra and Anita. Thank you for that question. Thank Appreciate you. Great. Madam Clerk, any other comments from uh, the public on matters not on the agenda? I only see Anita's hand raised. Yeah, I think I think she had mentioned that uh, Sandra was going to speak on it. Very okay, good. No, good. no then, more hands. Then let's move on to our next item, um, Madam Clerk. Item three: presentations. All right, our friends of the library, Karen Wilson, President Wilson, welcome. Uh, comments from friends of the Sacramento Public Library. Good afternoon. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, just a couple of things, a few hours ago, we completed our month-long series of webinars with the Sacramento Public Library called Money Matters, and Rivka has a second career going on as the next Brene Brown as an inspirational speaker. I think she did a great job on the topic of leaving a lasting legacy of a life well-lived, very well-received. Uh, we did four Money Matters seminars uh, together uh, one each Thursday of the month of October, and this was our final one. We thank the library for helping us make that available as a public service. Um, and thanks again to those of you who've joined our honorary committee for the Young Readers Fund. We'll be taking part in Giving Tuesday this year on behalf of the fund, so we'll be in touch with you about that. At the Book Den, uh, we had a very well-received teachers only sale right before the school year started and donations are still brisk. So who knows what can happen out there. We've gotten everything through the door and that continues. So, uh, and we're working with Chair Guerra's staff on a dino themed family book giveaway event in December, rain or shine. So that will be fun. Uh, and Book First is getting underway as we speak for this school year. We're uh, filling up our volunteer slots for both at home and in-person help sorting books by classroom and reading level. And that's, uh, we have eight more schools this year who have joined the Book First program, which is based on need. So, and, and that's probably a result of the pandemic, I think. 
Uh, so we're very happy uh, that Book First is going well this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Sure. Appreciate all the work that you guys do out there at the Friends of the Library. Um, okay, Madam Clerk, next item here on the agenda. Item four, closed session, pursuant to California Government Code Section 5497, Public Employee Employment Library Director and CEO. And I will add everyone to the breakout room. Perfect. We're going to go ahead and uh, adjourn to closed session, and we'll be back here shortly. Um, for members uh, uh, here from the board, we're, you're going to get a notification here and uh, go ahead and I think push the blue button. And for members Just, of the public, we'll, we'll be back I'm shortly. Sorry. Let me make sure call in user number one. Is that Don Natoli? Yes, that's it at the 9128. Or not, not I don't know what the um, number here is. Oh, in the conference room, it's uh, yeah. 896. Yeah. Yep. That's uh, okay. Care I'll of. Thank add you. you. Sue Frost, are you able to join?
And we're back. All right, Madam Clerk, as we're uh, as uh, as people are coming back in, just let me know when we've got all our board members back, and then we'll readjourn it once we have everybody back. Jared, Don wanted to make sure you can bring him back. Okay, I moved him. And everybody's back. All right. Okay, so uh, we've got everybody back. So Madam Clerk, I'm going to reconvene out of closed session at 3.36 p.m. Uh, same date, October 28, 2021. Um, <laughs> uh, believe me, I've worked all nighters in another job. So, uh, so uh, Council, uh, Jennifer, uh, do we have anything to report out of closed session? Um, we just need to report that the, um, that the board has identified a preferred candidate and has given um, the chair and I um, some negotiating parameters. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Council Gore. Uh, let's go again, Madam Clerk, to the next item on the agenda. Item five, executive team report. All right, Rika. Thank you, Heather. Uh, I'll refer the board to my written report. Uh, I want to make special note of the uh, 
the clean mobility options update provided by Kathy Crossweight, and she's going to share some information with the board. It'll take about three minutes. Hopefully that's queued up. Yes, Jared is on it. So I just wanted to uh, quickly introduce this video that we have worked on under the SHINE grant, which is part of SMUD. And this is part of the virtual reality. And then on top of that virtual reality inside it, where we hope for the future of mobile services that we're able to bring this type of training to uh, at-risk areas to introduce them to not just library services, but also um, options in the world of clean energy. So Jared, do you wanna go ahead? Green energy is vital to the health and prosperity of the Sacramento region. And the Sacramento Public Library is ready to play a very active role in that. We want to help with that revolution by offering electric mobile services, hosting an electric car share program, providing dedicated charging infrastructure to the community, and setting up transportation hubs at select branches. We are starting this process by conducting community assessments, talking to people in the neighborhoods where we hope to expand mobile services. And these are areas such as Vineyard and the Southgate area. Our plan includes a slightly different type of bookmobile, which we refer to as the Sacramento Hub on Wheels, or Showmobiles for short. These vehicles will be all electric, be able to come into the neighborhoods, but provide services that are unique to what the community wants. We're asking people about what access through our Library of Things collection would they prefer? Do they want to experience what it's like to work with a 3D printer? Or do they want some tools that could be offered through Library of Things? By polling the community, which we currently do with our current collection, we can find out exactly what that neighborhood could use and bring those items to them. As part of this grant, we are working on using virtual reality to bring a better understanding of the services of clean energy, of opportunities to people who aren't familiar with it. So with the showmobiles, we can bring an Oculus headset where you can actually go into a job training and find out more about what that might look like before you fully commit. But rest assured that even with all the bells and whistles, we will still be able to provide traditional library services. We have expanded our world language collection so we can bring more reading materials to neighborhoods where English might not be the primary language. We can still offer story times, but do it right there in a park that's close by. There are so many opportunities when we are able to bring services to people who might not be familiar with what a public library is really there for and how they can take advantage of it. Ultimately, showmobiles and tech hubs are more than the services they provide. They are a means of bringing communities together and sharing information. They are also not merely about transportation equity, but building community. And, and that is what we are working on for the Shine Grant is looking at those possibilities for the future. Well, thank you, Kathy. That was revolutionary. I don't think I've ever seen that out of a library before. It's very fun to work on.
looking forward to when it gets there. We uh, at the Air District this morning, we talked a little bit about the uh, electric bus and glad to see that we're, we're joining forces and partnering together. Excellent, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you, Rivka, let me take it back to you. In the interest of time, I think we can move on with the agenda. We wanna Perfect. make sure you're all here. Thank you, yes, we have some action items we, we've got to get to and then we uh, wanna make sure we don't lose our quorum here. Uh, Madam Clerk, item number six. Item six, information. Uh, any mem any questions from the board for the information items? I'm going to look to my uh, participation handle here. I don't see any hands up. Uh, let me go to those on the phone. Uh, Don, are you available? Do you have any questions on the information items? No, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, let's go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda. Item seven, consent. Good. Uh, let me first uh, ask for a motion from the board on the consent calendar. So moved. Been moved by board member Allen. Is there a second? There is a second. Been seconded by board member Jennings. Let me, uh, Madam Clerk, let me go to the public here. Are there any members from the public signed up to speak on items on the consent calendar? Nope, there are not. Seeing none, let me bring it back to the board. Any questions from the board on matters on consent? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please uh, call the roll. Bobby Singh Allen. Yes. Don Natoli. Aye. Eric Guetta. Aye. Garrett Gatewood. Aye. Kevin Spees. Aye. Rick Jennings. Aye. Sean Lalowy. Aye. Sue Frost. Aye. Tim Schaefer? Aye. Saul Hernandez? Aye. The motion passes with 10 members present. Great. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, our next item. Item 8.1, Sacramento Public Library Equity Statement. Thank very you. Uh, Chair Aguera, um, we would like to have Leanna Acevedo, one of our uh, intrepid, heroic public services managers speak briefly to the item if there is time. Uh, but we're presenting before you today the equity statement that's been developed by library staff. So let me bring it back to Ms. Acevedo. Thank you for uh, all the hard work in this. I know there's been countless meetings and, and, and participation to develop this. So let me bring it back to you. On a, this is our last action item. And um, and uh, to update the board and hopefully uh, a positive outcome. Thank you so much. I promise I will talk very quickly and click very quickly <laughs> through the presentation. <laughs> um, so let's start. So I wanted to basically just um, share some of the background work that went into this. So we follow very closely with the Government Alliance on Race and Equity, um, Race Forward model of normalize, organize, operationalize, which I know you're very familiar with because the city and county workers have gone through the Racial Equity 101 training with Ami Barnes, the city um, diversity and equity manager. Um, we want to focus on equity because we want to focus on outcomes. So diversity and inclusion is necessary, but it's not sufficient enough. So we want to make sure that we focus on outcomes. Um, and some of the ways that we have been doing it in the background for SPL is behind the scenes. We have been working with our wonderful comm team. So the EDI team and comm work very closely together. Um, to make sure that the messages are genuine, that we utilize voices from the community within the messages that we put out. And we have seen that the engagement with this is actually a lot higher. So these are just some of the posts that have gone out that have received a lot of engagement. And we do all types. And we work very closely with Com to make sure, again, that we are reaching the community. EDI team also worked on an EDI training, which was once again provided by Gara Race Forward, but we put our own SPL twist on it and making sure that we included Sacramento history within it. So we talk about redlining, we talk about the West End. Um, we also included library history within the US. 
So all of it, even though it was provided by GARE and Brace Forward, we wanted to make sure that it was very relatable to our staff and make sure that we had a solid foundation and vocabulary for everyone. This is just a timeline and some of the ways in which we normalize, organize, and operationalize. Um, as of October 2018 was when our journey began. We worked with Ami, who did a staff day for us in October of 2019. We also um, joined the CREI, which is California Libraries Cultivating Race, Equity, and Inclusion Initiative, which has, um, I believe, 20 or so California libraries within it now that are working on equity, um, racial equity plans. And so it's nice to have a cohort of other library systems that we can lean and learn from. Again, the EDI team at SBL has been a phenomenal team. They've worked on a lot of behind the scenes stuff, which is working with departments on support, mentoring, really making sure that people feel comfortable with addressing the elephant in the room and being able to have those uncomfortable and awkward conversations. And so all of this was just building blocks in order to get to our equity statement, which is really gonna drive the work forward. And so the equity statement, um, it's attachment B that is in the agenda, and we are hoping that it will be approved today and adopted today by the board. And it will help us with the next, the next steps in our journey, which is having an internal and external facing EDI pages to really hold us accountable to the work that we're saying we're going to do really using those um, government alliance and racial equity assessments to identify the gaps creating a racial equity um, plan and utilizing the racial equity tool in all aspects of the work that we do, as well as adopting the global diversity, equity and inclusion benchmarks, which the actual EDI team has been utilizing since its inception in 2019, but we want to roll it out to the entire organization to use. And so I kept it as brief as possible. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that no that was great thank you very much uh, and uh, I, for all that work that went into it um, I do have to you know recognize the staff the hours the focus on inclusion and then the path forward to as you said operationalize so uh, let me this is an action item but uh, let me bring this uh, to the board for questions here um, are there any questions from members of the board if not, let me take this over back to uh, the clerk. To, uh, our, Madam Clerk, are there any comments from the public on this item? Nope, there are no hands raised. Okay, uh, let me bring this back to the board. Uh, I'll start with, uh, Don, do you have any questions? You're, I know you were on the phone. I didn't ask if uh, you had your hand Yeah, up. no, Mr. Chair, and I'm prepared to move it if uh, there are no other questions. Thank you for your motion, uh, Board Member Natoli. Is there a second? I second. Second. It's been seconded by board member Lilloe. Is there any other questions or comments from the board? Seeing no hands raised. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Bobby Singh Allen. Yes. Don Natoli. Aye. Eric Guerra. Aye. Garrett Gatewood. Aye. Kevin Spees. Aye. Rick Jennings. Aye. Sean Lilloe. Aye. Sue Frost. Aye. Aye. Saul Hernandez. Aye. The motion passes with 10 members present. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, the next item on the agenda. Reports, ideas, and questions from board members. Item let, me, let me bring this to the board. Um, I don't see any hands raised. Any questions or comments or ideas from board members? Oh, uh, board member Frost, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to say that I opened up the newspaper and I saw Rivka's oh, beautiful smiling face in the paper and how the Young Readers Fund honors retiring library director Rivka. And I just wanted to take a moment to tell you Rivka that um, you're beautiful and we really appreciate all your high, hard work over time and looks like the community does also. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love the uh, uh, emojis there. Okay. All right, other questions, comments or uh, ideas from board members? 
Great. Well, thank you, uh, everyone. Then I see none. Uh, uh, Don, anything on your end? No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good meeting. Great. Uh, fantastic. I appreciate everybody their diligence. We got a lot of work done here and we kept our quorum. So at this point, we're adjourned at 3.52 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Thank you. Leanna, could you thank stay you. on for a minute? Kathy?